Being fat is awesome. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's empowering. It's rejuvenating. It's energizing. It's strong. It's an accomplishment. It's liberating. It's just beautiful. It's handsome, stunning. It's sexy. It's good. So good. I call bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, g'day, my name's Isaac Butterfield or the Butts Mom, whatever you want to call me. Just so you know, this game that we're playing in this video is called It's Not My Fault, It's Everybody Else's. It's a brand new game that our species is absolutely obsessed with. We are constantly just lying to ourselves to make ourselves feel better and it is a terrible pastime and it's only going to end in tragedy. Through social media you can see enormous amounts of lies that have become objective truth. They are thrust upon the wider public by people who are terrified to offend people's delicate sensibility. Sorry for the first trap, miners DNI. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, but in honour of all the fat phobia I've received in the past 24 hours because I dared to speak about animal liberation, here's a reminder of how fucking sexy I am, ooh yeah, and how I could never be this sexy if I wasn't this fat. Die mad. You look great, mate. You look. I'm so proud of how hard you've worked. But maybe that's just my thin privilege speaking. As you all know, as a, as a non-obese human, I have thin privilege. What is thin privilege? Let's ask Dr. Lee, whoever the fuck that is. <clears throat> when I speak about thin privilege, I am talking about the advantages that thin people in Western culture experience. Just in Western culture, okay, that's fair. Such as being assumed healthy and having a wide array of clothes available as well as a body that aligns with the dominant ideas of what is attractive, says Dr. Lee. What really annoys me about this conversation about being overweight and being healthy and all that type of stuff is if they just made one slight choice, one slight change to their diet, they could be very healthy people. That's saying after all, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I feel like society will tell you because you have an apple, you're not allowed to wear it. But as you can see, it covers the apples. Okay, okay, not that apple, obviously. Right, Butterfield. Cut it out. This is ridiculous. I'm being rude to the fat people. I need to be more unbiased, unthin privileged. The fat positivity community needs me to stop. The fat liberation army needs me to stop and I will. We need to protect fat people. So does Twitter apparently. Y'all need to add fat slash larger bodied folks to the protected categories when reporting abuse, abuse against us. Oh my God, fat phobia goes unchecked on this platform. Shut the fuck up. That is amazingly hilarious, but ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, I have two fantastic announcements, starting with this one. The Butts Barn got married to the Butts Lady just last week and I am so very happy. In fact, little Buttsman lady, will you join me on the video? <laughs> Hello, little Dixon who's now little Buttsman. We're married, we're very excited. Um, we had a beautiful ceremony and thank you very much to all the people who wished us well. But in more amazing news. Oh yes. Brand new merch. Look at this. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, the new hoodies are out. Can you see little Dickie? She's a little bit... She's a, there you go. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stop. You're about to start your OnlyFans. This, <laughs> this is the Butts Barn hoodie. All right, we've got it in black. We've got it in grey. There's a little Butts Barn signature there. It looks absolutely fantastic. We also have the Butts Barn Boonie. Look at that. Look at that. Dip your head, young lass. Look at that. Beautiful, gorgeous, fantastic, wonderful, absolutely fantastic. It is available now. This merch drop is the biggest of the year. We also have stubby holders, another hoodie that is only available online. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is. You've got to go and find it, ladies and gents. So go and grab that. Grab the hoodie. Support the channel. Help us pay for the fucking wedding. Good grief. And uh, let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's answer the question, is obesity a choice? Now, this isn't just gonna be me saying, no, it's not, straight off the bat. Because I feel like we need to take into account a lot of other people's opinion to answer that question. It's such a divisive topic that we need to have a look at some people that perhaps don't have the same opinion as me. And one who doesn't is a YouTuber who I really, really enjoy. His name is Jeff Nippard. And I really like Jeff. Jeff, please be my friend. You're one of my favourite YouTubers. I love you. 
Here's someone I've been subscribed to for a long time. It's a great channel if you want to work out how you should be training and how to get the physique you want and the diet, all that type of stuff. Go and check out old Jeffy Boy. So when he posted a video recently, is obesity a choice science explained? I was absolutely intrigued to hear what this man who honestly is one of the most scientifically focused individuals in the fitness game had to say about it. Is obesity a choice? This is a tough question, and a lot of people seem to think about it something like this, where you have an obese button on the left and a not obese button on the right. And anyone who is currently obese is obese because they made a conscious decision to press the obese button. Okay, so that I guess is where we all look at how people are right now. We unconsciously think of them as the people they are, not the people they were. We don't look at the lives that they've had, the decisions that they may have made in the past, the effects of their childhood or, or their work culture or anything like that. Their family lives have had on them. We just look at the people they are right now in front of us. It's like a journey to the pub. You know, there's several ways to get there and we all end up getting there, but the journey we've had is all very different. That is a layman's way of explaining a very complex topic. But what Jeff goes on to explain in this video is that the journey is the important part, not so much the outcome. He goes on to explore the topic, and I, I implore you to watch this video of his. He, he explores the topic of it's not the choices that you make one day, it's all of the choices cumulative, 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 the cumulative choice. All the fucking choices you make that come together to be the person that you end up being. It's not like one day you just wake up and go, let's fucking grow this gut. But conversely, you at this point you are right now can also make brand new choices to take you in a brand new direction to a point of a much healthier life. And you know what? The road of that healthier life will go a lot fucking longer than the road of the unhealthy life. At some point that unhealthy road turns into a gravel, a dirt road, and then the road ends with death. The healthier life goes on forever until you die. You eventually die. We're all gonna die. Don't freak out! But I don't think that's how it works. I mean, for starters, if you selected 100 people at random and gave them the option, my guess is that almost every one of them would press the not obese button. I agree, young Jeffy boy, I agree. But there are, and here is, this is the big issue here. There are so many people that are gaining weight constantly. They're getting a little bit overweight and then they become obese. And what they're hearing from people is not hard truths. They're hearing the objective truths that are more polite, if you will, or more politically correct. And they are finding out through social media and through their own echo chambers that what they are doing is in fact healthy and sustainable. And they're going to live a happy and beautiful life. And it's everyone else's fault that they might be looked at in a certain way or that maybe a doctor might look down upon them. That's everybody else's fault, not their own. Can I just say this? I get accused of hating fat people all the time. That is ridiculous. I was once very, very obese. Not that fucking long ago, okay? I've done diets, I've lost a lot of weight, I've put it back on because I've gone back to my old way of eating and living. Saying I hate fat people is a strange assertion to make and a weird fucking claim. I do not hate anybody, nobody. The only assertion that I make is that it is not healthy and I know that from personal experience. I know what it can do to your body and not just killing you at a young age. I understand that that is the be all and end all. We don't want to die young, but also the things that it does to your body as we get older. All that shit food, all the fat that's just fucking growing upon you. The little things it does. Just think about just one thing. Think about what it does to your skin. Think about what it does to your fucking ankles. Your ankles are fucked, right? They're carrying around your big fat fabby guts all day. These are the things that happen to your body. You slowly break down until death. And this is why being obese is not a good thing. It's not a positive thing. There's no fat phobia running around. You need to change yourself. I'm fucking passionate about this shit because I know it is achievable to go from an overweight body to a fitter body. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an easy thing to do, but it is achievable. And for all those people out there saying, I've tried everything. No, you fucking haven't. You just haven't figured out what works for you yet. Maybe it looks something more like this, where you have this lifelong continuous series of choices to pick certain foods over others, like whether to order fried chicken or grilled chicken, regular Coke or diet Coke, a small fries or a supersized fries. Absolutely. And it is that same journey analogy once again. Every decision 
decision we make in life, turn left, turn right, whatever it happens to be, it leads us in a direction. And we don't know where that direction will be. It may be positive, it may be negative, it may be happy life or the worst life imaginable. But we have decisions to make as human beings. And that is life. You may decide to smash a big old cheesecake on your birthday like I did the other week. Or you may decide to smash a cheesecake every fucking night. If you do it once, it may fuck up your toilet bowl, but if you do it every fucking day, it might fuck up your life. Not straight away, but gradually over time, you'll start tearing apart your joints, your blood pressure will go up, you start feeling like shit. All these horrible things. Every leading cause of disease has obesity as one of the risk factors. So that, that's just, the, that's the argument. Done. There. Alright? Everyone's freaking out about COVID. If you were supremely overweight, you were just as likely to die from COVID as an old person. So where was that in the fucking news? Fitter people make the more correct and more appropriate and more positive decisions about their body and how to fuel it and how to train it more often than obese people. That's what it comes down to. And certain behaviors over others, like whether to get up and exercise or stay on the couch. And over time, maybe it's the cumulative effect of these many individual choices that causes someone to become obese. I think that's pretty fucking obvious. If you make poor decisions, you're gonna lead yourself to a suboptimal level of health. Right? I do think this is a bit closer to reality. However, even this analogy is still very incomplete. Consider this graph taken from a 1990 study where 24 subjects were overfed by 1,000 calories per day for 100 days. So in this graph, it's really interesting. We see people who are fed uh, the same 1,000 calories more than their maintenance, what they require every single day to stay at their same weight for three months. So 1,000 calories more than you would normally eat. Some people gain 10 pounds, some 20, some 30, and, and so forth. So why is that? Jeff goes on to explain that some people burn more calories naturally. This is the whole thing about, oh, I wish I had their metabolism, right? Everyone thought like that. We all knew someone when we were at school or, or growing up or now who just eats whatever they want, right? The, the fucking fuck you. There's so many variables at play here. It's all, sometimes it's about luck. Sometimes it's exercise. Sometimes it's the thermic effect of food, how our bodies digest the food. And also this thing called NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenic which is actually a great band name. We all know that exercise burns our body, but this neat thing is basically what you're doing when you're sitting down. Are you fidgeting? Are you moving around? Are you tapping your foot when you're sitting at your desk? All of those things add up, and they add up to sometimes very strange numbers. Neat refers to the calories you burn from daily activities that aren't actual exercise. So stuff like fidgeting, tapping your feet, etc. So neat is, to a significant degree, outside of your control and it can differ enormously between individuals. This study from Levine and colleagues overfed participants by 1,000 calories per day for eight weeks and found that NEAT levels ranged from negative 98, they actually moved around less, to plus 692 calories per day. That is a shit ton of calories burned more from person to person. And maybe this just explains why some people burn more calories than others. And once again, Life isn't fair, get over it. But we know these things. We can work out that this guy over here can eat a cheesecake every night and he's fine. And we can't, we know these things. So we have to make choices that are appropriate to us. Most people would be quick to praise the thin person for their discipline and critique the overweight person for simply lacking willpower and making the wrong choices, not realizing the many baseline genetic factors that could be making it very easy for the thin person to stay thin and making it very hard for the overweight person to lose any weight at all. But that's just metabolism. It would appear to me, to a certain extent, that Jeff is just a very nice dude. Because yes, sure, one person has it easier, but does that just mean we give up? Fuck no. Sure, it's a challenge, but challenges are good in your life. That's what you need more of. There's another big factor here, which is hunger. Without a doubt, that is the hardest part of a diet. We get so hungry because we're so used to just eating whenever we want, right? So if that is a big hurdle to get over for a lot of people. What's to blame there though? Is, is it habits? Sure. Is it ghrelin, the hormone that, that tells you when you're hungry and when you're not? Sure. Is it boredom? Sure. There is a lot of factors at play here. What I did to combat this, and you can fucking tell me this diet's bullshit to the cows come up. I don't care. It worked for me. Was I ate a low carb, high fat diet, the keto diet. It worked for me because I started eating it to help with my epilepsy and it did, anecdotally. But what it also did was it made me less hungry. I wasn't as hungry all the time. I, I would fast from the night before at like eight or nine o'clock all the way through to like two o'clock. I was not hungry. And through that, I lost 40 kilos, which is like 88 pounds. You know, 
So it works. That's not me just saying keto is magic. It's just a great way to control your calories. And if you struggle to control your calories, which is most obese people, try the fucking diet. Consult your doctor, etc., etc. After all, it all comes down to calories in versus calories out. If you are burning more than you're taking in, you will lose weight and Jeff agrees. It is a simple fact that obesity results from eating more calories than you burn. And tightly controlled metabolic word experiments repeatedly confirm that caloric intake is the driver of both fat loss and fat gain. That is all it boils down to. Forget NEAT, forget disabilities, all that stuff, all right? If you are eating less than you are burning, then you will lose weight. It means that anyone who is obese got obese by eating in a sustained caloric surplus over time. It's just that avoiding that sustained surplus is so much harder for some people than it is for others and for reasons that are beyond their choosing. And this is why I think it's incorrect to reduce all of these factors down to a simple choice to be obese or not. Okay, here is where Jeff and I disagree. And once again, I love you, Jeff, but you are too nice of a man. Sorry. He weighs this all up and he says, this cannot be one choice because there's so many choices and factors at play. So it can't simply just come down to a choice. But here are my thoughts. Eat like everything else is a choice, whether we want it to be or not. At the very least, it's a reaction to something that happens to you. That's still a choice. If you have everything against you, if you have a disability, if you can't walk, you still have the ability to exercise in a certain way. You still have the ability to choose how much you're consuming. Although it may be so very difficult, you still have a choice. You have autonomy over your body. If you can still somewhat move, you have autonomy over your body. Even if you're brought up by shit parents, even if you're hungry all the time, even if you don't know what a diet is, but you should know fucking now, mate, you have a choice. You have the choice to eat less. You have the choice to work harder. You have the choice to learn about your body, how it works, how to train, all that shit. Do you keep eating the same way you are and blame everyone else? Or do you have a fucking stringent approach to how you train and how you eat? That's a choice. Don't listen to these fucking idiots that say you're perfect the way you are. No one is perfect. No one, except for little Dixon, obviously. It's beautiful. But no one is perfect. You can't think like that. You can't rest on your laurels. You gotta keep moving forward. You can't fucking sit down and give up. There might be lifestyle factors like depression and stress and maybe your family grew up fucking feeding your shit foods, but it's a choice. Wake up tomorrow and have a different one. Coming back to the original question, is obesity a choice? Well, I think the answer is no, at least not in all cases, and certainly not in the simplistic sense. There's just too much of an influence from genetics and environment to shift the blame entirely on the individual for their circumstance. Okay, whilst I agree with Jeff's arguments, I disagree with his conclusion. There is a lot we can't control in our lives, but there is a lot we can take ownership of. You need to sit there, and it's Jocko Willink that talks about this in his book, Ex Extreme Ownership, and take extreme ownership over everything that happens to you. If something happens, if you're too fat, or you're, you're fucking whatever, it's your fault. So work on it. I honestly believe that Jeff's uh, conclusion here is a bit of a cop out, but in his defense, he then goes on to say this. But that also doesn't mean that no one has any control over their health and their body weight. Clearly, if people wanna lose weight, even if there are many factors working against them, such as low metabolic rate, high hunger, and so forth, it's still possible to lose weight if you sustain a caloric deficit over time. Mm, so I'd argue Jeff just said it was a choice, but anyway, I, I get where he's coming from. He wants to keep both camps happy. This isn't because he's a dick and he's saying that fat is healthy. It's not him at all. He's a very, very good YouTuber, a very good fitness YouTuber, and a positive role model for a lot of people. But he's trying to remain a, as unabrasive as possible in a very abrasive video. We all make choices in our life, and I guess the choice that you need to make right now is will you take the easy choice or will you make the right choice? So this whole conversation got me thinking, what can I do to actually, rather than just whinging about the problem, be a part of the answer, help people make the more appropriate choices for them? And so I thought, what about a podcast that goes for an hour, that's me at the gym training with someone who is big in the, the gym space or whatever you wanna be, and we go through a workout together. We talk about what they've done, how they've eaten, supplements, everything. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. If you have a good name for it, let me know in the comment section, but keep an eye out for it because I think it will be very beneficial for a lot of people. My goal through that is to turn people's focus away from the dad bod and create the man bod. 
all right? A man bod is strong. It looks half decent. It doesn't have to be super fucking shredded and ripped and you're on all the roids. No, you just have to be strong. You have to be healthy. Look after your family and fight off the fucking evil doers. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, go and grab the merch. It is on sale right now. It's extremely limited. Go and check it out. Look at that. All my nipples. Uh, be a good motherfucking piece in the Middle East. My dick stinks. Toodaloo. Yeah.